Yes. That's embarrassing and it may be TMI, but you know what? It's the truth. You just, mm, mm. It was a bad day. Oh, oh. There was still days where it was just unbearable. <laughs> it was unbearable. Hop to your feet, hop to it. When they say jump, you say hi hi. Oh, okay, wait, hold up. Let me just breathe real quick. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Hi, if you're new, I am Brittany. I'm a content creator around makeup, beauty, life, and motherhood. Today, I, I'm finally getting to something that I haven't done. Oh, well, first let me start off. I'm pregnant! <laughs> We're expecting baby number four in this this video is way long overdue. I've, I had anticipated on tracking my pregnancy every step along the way since I found out early and I just, I wish I had done it the other times. And here I am at 19 weeks and I'm just now getting to making this video. You really haven't missed much. I found out around six weeks and then my first appointment was at eight weeks and here we are 19 weeks I have a belly book and I got this last time I was expecting and I had never heard of such a thing I didn't ever even think about tracking my pregnancy in a book I just didn't know that they that these were a thing like I had, I had no idea basically and I kept it for if I got pregnant again and this time I have got to use it I'm so excited I didn't want to start it last time because I was by the time I had received this it I, I was almost or maybe I was in my third trimester I don't know it was pretty late and I was like mm, why am I gonna start tracking this now I kind of I kind of wish that I would have but kind of a shoulda, coulda, woulda thing. So I'm doing it this time. And my first trimester was so, so exhausting. I, I guess I'll start from the beginning. I found out I was expecting when a lot was going on in my life. We were in the process of finishing building our house well okay we finished we were finished building our house and then we started moving in in December of 2020 that was really stressful <laughs> finished building our house and then trying to rush moving in we're still fixing things here and there it's not complete 100% finished so we're still working on that even now and it's April middle of April of 2021 but we got in here and then you know right as about Christmas was about to hit so we we're rushing to put decorations up we're rushing to get presents we're rushing you know for all just the Christmas holidays after that the new year came my husband was in an accident at work and basically left him he hurt his knee really bad he still yet has gone to see a doctor which he should have gone to see a doctor long ago i was pretty convinced that it was broke but apparently it's not broke since he's walking on it i still think there's something seriously wrong with it but basically he was injured and for at least a week because he's so freaking hard-headed he will not stay off of it but he stayed off of it for a week and basically i was taking care of him and still trying to do little we were still moving things slowly so i was trying to do that take care of the kids and take care of my husband just house chores but it just it was tough right then there was a lot going on between the move and then his accident well after that you know i didn't think anything of it i normally track my period i usually track my period with clue on an app and i was just thinking well okay it's just like you know i have a lot going on I'm stressed about moving. I'm stressed about like having to do every single little thing for my husband. I was having it like he couldn't walk on it at all. 
The only way he'd get around the house was with me. So if he had to go to the bathroom, I have to be right there and I have to like take him to the bathroom. If he needed a shower, I have to be right there to take him to the shower and help him in the shower and stuff. And it just, you know, the stress of moving and just all of that. And then, you know, of course that puts my husband out of work. He's our main provider. So that's stressful right there. No money coming in. Um, everything could just come to a screeching halt because he owns his own business. Well, after that comes around and I'm like, okay, I'm late, you know, I'll just give it a few more days and I took a test and I was kind of on the fence about taking the test. I was like, you know, I know it's going to be negative. Like, why am I going to take it? You know, I'm just going to be wasting a test, <laughs> like just kind of wasting my time. And I, I like, I was kind of on edge several days about it. And I was like, should I take a test? Should I not take a test? Well, I took the test and it came out positive and I was like it was like one of those strip tests and I was like nah this isn't right you know this is it's expired you know because it was expired I was like I'll take another test a few days later so a few days later it was fine Mickey he's hurt oh poor Mickey yeah he's all better he's all bad all right go play I'm almost done. He's, he's all better. I fixed him. I kissed his boo-boo. He's all better. No, don't throw him. Now he's hurt. So a few days later, I go and take another test. Well, it was a strip test, and I was tracking him. And this one came out positive as well. And I was like, okay, well, this one came out positive too. You know, there, there's really no way. I was kind of in denial. I was like, there's really no way. <laughs> and so I ended up taking another one and it just like the line just kept getting more like darker and darker and darker. Cause it was, it was pretty faint. Like the first couple, it was, it was like there, but it was like hard to see. And I was like, mm, like this is probably like this, you know, that's why, I, that's why I blew it off. I was like, no, there's no way, you know, it's just, I kept talking it up to be expired. Well, then I was like, I have these two big ones, and I had um, like one that wasn't expired, and then that was expired. I was like, I'm gonna take these. Like, I'm gonna take both. Well, I'm gonna take the one that's expired first. And sure enough, that baby came out quick. And I was like, okay, well, might as well just go take one more. So I think in total, I took like a total of like five tests. <laughs> um, it just when it hit me. I was just, I was in shock. I, I was in shock. I was, I'm still breastfeeding. This is, this is what threw it all off. I, I really was convinced that you could not get, I mean, some people I thought could maybe get, I didn't know all about it. Some people get pregnant, um, you know, early, even if they're breastfeeding and some people don't. And I breastfed each kid to almost two years old. Well, I was convinced that I specifically, it was just maybe, maybe something with me that I couldn't get pregnant while breastfeeding. Well, here we are. I'm still breastfeeding. My two-year-old, actually, we were in the process. Well, not yet. We were getting, I was transitioning to start weaning him. Hi, Mickey. I was in the process to start weaning him. I was tired of it. He's just getting too big, you know, for me. You're, you're distracting me. So, I, you know, moral of the story is I thought that I couldn't get pregnant. Specifically me. I know other people did. It happened to some people. But I was pretty convinced for me, specifically, it could not happen for me to get pregnant while breastfeeding. And I, I definitely did. Let's see. I found out I was expecting around six weeks. And I can only keep it a secret. Um, I think I kept it a secret for about a week. And then I just couldn't, I couldn't stand it any longer because my two older boys have been asking for a sister since I was pregnant with Brixton, which was my last one, with number three. So, I mean, it's been a while. And then I finally decided, okay, I, I need to tell them. And I could only keep it a secret a few more days and I wanted to do something special. So I was kind of thinking I was going to like split it up and I was going to tell my husband and then I was going to tell the kids. But I ended up like, I just couldn't wait any longer. I got I ended up getting donuts for my husband. Telling him with a note that says, your aim, what did it say? Sorry I'm late, but your aim is good. So he got donuts that said that. 
So he found out before the kids, but they all found out at one time. And then I got, went to the store and got these little bags. And I wanted to put like a baby in them and something else. But I ended up running out of time and couldn't find what I needed and never have time to myself. And I had gone early one morning, which is very unlike me to leave the house and go get donuts by myself. To go get donuts is a rare occasion thing, but then by myself, it's just like, that's kind of unheard of. So kind of, <laughs> I guess leaving hints here and there. Oh, I thought my phone was ringing, sorry. Well, I ended up just going to the store and I got these bags because I was already taking so long to go get donuts and then to go to the store to get these bags. And I ended up putting a little Sour Patch Kids in there and I put notes and I put something else. Baby bottle pops, that's what it was. Baby bottle pops in these bags. The notes said Big Brother again, Big Brother again, and Big Brother. And my oldest is was learning to read at that moment and he, so I figure th this will be perfect. So he'll probably be able to figure this out. Well, <laughs> he ended up needing help. I had to like, just like say Big Bub, big brother I mean they got the candy and they're all excited about the candy but they you know they didn't put two and two together until I was like big brother again I don't know how to explain it to them they were I, Brantley and Branton were excited Brixton he didn't understand I think he's just now starting to understand that he's gonna be big brother I'm not convinced 100% I think you know he'll talk about it a little bit because we talk about it and the boys talk about it with him but Brandon's reaction was, he had to come around. It, it's not what I was expecting at all. When I found out, I was shocked. I was shocked. But at the same time, like, I was so happy. And then as time has crept on now, I'm kind of like freaking out like four. I mean, I was freaking out with one, you know, when I was pregnant with my first one. I was like, how am I gonna do this by myself? And then another one, you get pregnant again and you're like, Oh my gosh, I can handle one, but how am I going to handle two? And then the same thing for three. And then I guess the same thing is happening for number four. So I'm just, I'm getting nervous. Not to mention time is going by so much faster than it did. than I remember for like, you know, the first time or the second time. The second time goes faster and then the third time goes even faster. And now the fourth time is like, holy crap, I just found out I was pregnant. And now I'm almost halfway. And, you know, you really think about it and... <laughs> like really only four more months, I'm going to have another baby. <laughs> I'm going to be in the delivery room again. It just kind of just, I don't know. It's all been hitting me all at once here lately. And it's just been kind of, I've been getting super nervous and anxious. And like, I just feel like I need to like pump the brakes, please, on life. Because it's just, it's going so fast. It's full speed ahead. And there's nothing I can do to stop it or slow it down. And it's like, it's kind of scaring me. But, I mean, I'm still super excited. I'm just, you know, nervous at the same time. But to be expected, I mean, I'm pretty sure every mom feels nervous. And even being my fourth time, I still, like, am anxious. <laughs> so, I think more so about, like, the delivery process. My last two pregnancies were kind of a little traumatic. So, that's that. But let's, let's get back to the symptoms. I'm going to catch you guys up with how I was feeling with everything. And what's funny is like some people were saying, okay, so I, I revealed early, I revealed to everybody that I was pregnant at 10 weeks, but I had posted a picture and I guess maybe, I didn't see a bloat. I thought, you know, I was just gaining extra weight because I'd been gaining extra weight from the holidays just during the pandemic. I've just been eating a lot and I haven't been working out. <laughs> um, so I mean, I didn't think any, you know, that's probably another sign of it too. I wouldn't think anything of it, but everybody, I think a lot of the family at least were noticing that I was putting on weight and um, some of them were like, as soon as I announced it, I knew it. I was like, how, how did you know? Like, I didn't even know. Like, <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking like, I was in denial. How did you know? Anyways, I was really bloated, but what, what really gave it away when I finally like realized that I needed to take a test because I was late was because I would not stop cramping. I was cramping around the normal time, which was normal. Like it was a normal, like before I get my period, I'd start cramping. And then during my period, well, it just kept going on. And it was like, I was cramping for like full month straight. And I was like, okay, this is kind of weird too. But I didn't, I didn't put two and two together until, you know, way late. I think way late. I was getting cranky and by week five, Oh yeah, I also got sick. We all caught the stomach flu. 
or, or stomach bug or something um, right after I had told them and I was feeling fine besides like just moody and kind of bloated but we all got sick and it hit us like the whole family except for Brandon somehow he didn't get sick but it almost went around twice for the kids but we all took turns it was a 24-hour bug whatever it was and it was it was so awful but after that I stayed nauseous and I was having trouble eating anything on here I can remember um, oh I remember putting this down too we had went out of town right before a few days before I had mentioned it to the boys and to Brandon I had I was noticed as soon as I found out like when we were out of town one day we were in um, the hotel room and it was at night and my stomach was like twitching it was like you know how you get an eye twitch but my stomach it was clear as day you could see on my stomach and my stomach was like doing this weird twitch it was, it was really weird really weird that didn't happen with any of the other pregnancies but that happened several more times in um, my first trimester as well but after we got sick the, the nausea would not go away oh my gosh I can remember like my nipples were getting so sore my boobs were so sensitive it just like that was another reason as to why I had to finish um, weaning and get Branton or Br I had to get Brixton off breastfeeding like all together oh man my camera is dying are you kidding me let me go get another battery on. and nipple pains and boob pains yes still still very much sore um, even at 19 weeks so <laughs> that's something that I didn't really experience with my other pregnancies as well kind of strange Let's see by week seven a lot of nausea super exhausted yeah there was a lot of days as well that I would just go and be on the couch and just be miserable all day long like I could barely feed my kids and that was it um, I didn't do any housework I did the the least amount of possible to make anything like especially for breakfast and lunch by dinner I mean that was my husband's deal I was like look I can't I can barely eat it was, it was bad it was the worst exhaustion that I've experienced at all like out of all the pregnancies so bad um, I tried to get um, medication but last time and this time have we don't have insurance and last time I was getting samples of Bongesta well it's really expensive <laughs> without insurance and then my doctor basically suggested at eight weeks when I finally had my appointment to confirm, hear the heartbeat and stuff, of, um, what was I going with this? Um, they told me to take vitamin B6 and a Unisom, like the chalky tablets, like not the gel because the gel doesn't do anything. I found out the hard way. And so I started taking that every single night. Also, I have moved, I moved up to C-bands and then I found no more nausea bands. The, the C-bands have like this little, the same thing as this. It has like a little thing on it and it like holds down a pressure point. Actually, I need to get another pair of these that are tighter because this one's like a little bit almost too loose. So sometimes I still get nauseous, <clears throat> but with my C-bands, those are even like super, super tight. But the, they're so bulky and they look like sweatbands on your arms and they're just kind of ugly. So I'm super, super happy for these because when I first opened these up, these were actually scented. And I think it was like in a ginger scent. Um, maybe a mint. I can't remember. But that wore off. But, you know, they're more skin colored and I can shower in these. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's nice as well. I didn't do the teas because last time I tried them, like I wanted to throw up, so I wasn't even gonna try them, attempt them this time. But I ended up going to essential oils. My stepmother actually got me, she's been so sweet through all this, bringing me extra stuff and helping me out, especially through the nausea. She got me this travel size essential oils diffuser. So I can use that with a USB cord. I use it in the car mostly because that was like when, like, I, it, it got to be where motion sickness like really got to me anytime being in the vehicle you know, I, I would start feeling really nauseous and really bad and so 
I would use it at home too, but I used it more so in the car and that helped out a ton. She also got me this like this like all kinds of different essential oils to take my tablet that I put in the capsules, the ingestible ones, and then um, this little roller and then like the other ones that you can just mix up into different stuff. So I did a lot of that and that also helped a lot. Um, even taking the what my doctor suggested, there was still days where it was just unbearable. <laughs> it was unbearable. And I should have, we should, I mean, my husband kept telling me, you know, like, we can still get it. It's okay. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. It's no big deal. Like, it doesn't matter if it's super expensive or not. <clears throat> just because it became a problem. Like, I, I didn't leave the couch or anything. It just, like I said, I was barely taking care of my kids. I just couldn't. Okay, so by week eight, that was my first doctor's appointment. Week nine, motion sickness, nauseous, mood swings. By week 10, I was moody. My pants are slightly snug. <laughs> Bring on the elastic, yes. This time, I have definitely expanded more <laughs> sooner. That's normal, being, you know, by your third pregnancy, they say, you're showing a lot sooner. Yes, I was showing a lot. I feel like I was showing sooner, like my second time, and then more so my third time, and definitely, obviously, the fourth time because even when I had, we were still keeping a secret before we even told anybody. If I went out, it was pretty noticeable and my, like all my pants and shorts and stuff started getting really tight. I've basically been living in sweats. <laughs> I just can't, I can't fit into a lot of stuff. I'm, I broke out my, I broke out my maternity stuff. Ooh, basically as soon as I found out that I was pregnant, I was like, I mean, we were moving anyway, so I found them and I just left them out and put them up. I've been, fitting into some of those. I'm still missing some. I don't know where those are at. No telling. We're still unboxing stuff here and there. By week 11, nausea with vengeance, low energy, sleepy. By week 12, exhausted, sick, tired, everything makes me nauseous. Um, week 12, okay, that's when I said that I, I told everybody. I thought I told everybody it, but apparently I waited till, okay, yeah. Cause I was wanting to tell everybody for Valentine's Day. Have not been keeping up with my prenatal appointment. Then again, I've skipped the last two just so I don't have to pay whatever it is. And then um, tests, I figure I can catch up. Like I feel fine, everything's fine. I feel movement, so I'm sure I'm okay. But this, I actually have an appointment on Thursday, that's tomorrow, today's Wednesday. Um, and it's my anatomy scan. So we're gonna do the ultrasound first and then, you know, the appointment after. I'm sure I have tests to go do as well. I feel like last time, every time I went to the doctor, I was definitely giving blood every single time I went. I don't know why. By week 13, still nauseous, feeling twitches. Feels like a little bit of movement, like maybe spasms and growing pains for sure. Like I said, I was feeling those um, spasms and then they kind of turned into twitches and like flutters, but it was different. By like week 13, I say little spasms, it, it felt like I don't even know how to describe this because I didn't, maybe I just wasn't paying attention or I wasn't noticing with my other pregnancies, but I could definitely, like this time I feel my body like I feel my belly stretching and it feels like if it kind of like sometimes it burns but sometimes well it started off just feeling like it was stretching and then like sometimes it burns like most of the time it burns it feels like an Indian burn if you've ever had one of those like as a kid when you have like someone who comes up and grabs your arm and they like twist your skin like both ways that's what it feels like <clears throat> that's I mean that's the only way that I can describe it by week 14 Nausea letting up, gaining energy, motion sickness, anytime in cars. I started catching up with all the chores because I was like two months behind in chores. <laughs> yeah, it got so bad to where like, <laughs> and my dishwasher didn't work. Oh my gosh, I was having to wash dishes. This is a brand new house and I was so mad about this for so long, it's fixed now. But it took like a good, like it just got fixed. The beginning of this month, the end of, the end of March, the beginning of April, I don't know, it just got fixed. I've been washing dishes and it took like, I'm not kidding you, about two hours. If my sink filled up, it's like one of those huge deep sinks, stainless steel front apron sinks. When it would fill up, it would take me two hours. Two hours of washing dishes, freaking socks. 
let me tell you, and when you're nauseous, <laughs> it makes it all the world, or, or all the while worse. It makes it, it makes it so, I hate doing dishes anyway, but I'd rather do dishes over laundry. <laughs> and let me tell you, nobody ever had, Brandon took over laundry for sure, but he hates dishes as well. He ended up like having to help out though, because I would let it pile up until we had absolutely nothing to drink out of, nothing to eat with, nothing to eat off of. And then when I'd have enough energy, I'd do a little bit here and a little bit there just because it would take so long. And then what took the longest was you, after you wash it, you have to like set it up to dry unless you're going to sit there and dry hand dry all of it. So when I would do that, of course I would like there and dry it and then I'd have to put it up and have that space cleared off so I can rewash and then set them to dry like as I'm washing and then go back and dry them and set them up and it would take like three times like three times like three times of washing and then setting to dry and then drying off and then putting up yeah it took it took forever and that's not something that I'm, I mean I'm sure a lot of people don't complain about that but when you're used to having a dishwasher and then you don't <laughs> it's <laughs> It's heartbreaking. Well, it's not heartbreaking. It's hard. It's just hard, okay? That part was so hard. And this is like in the second trimester, okay? Because you're in your second trimester at week 13, but I'm still like super nauseous. But this is when I'm starting to gain my back my energy, which I've been having a lot of energy lately. I'm exhausted because I've been just like doing so much, but I'm still like, I have the energy, but I'm exhausted all the time. Also, oh my goodness, this has happened to me in the last few pregnancies as well. It's pretty normal. <sighs> yes, while your hair starts growing quite quickly and looking fabulous, sometimes you grow hair, extra hair, in unwanted places. Kind of embarrassing, but you know, at this point, like, whatever <laughs> like not a lot of people talk about it and yes um, more I feel like I've got more arm hair it's like definitely darkening up um, I've got like a little mustache going and it's not just like peach fuzz like yeah I had peach fuzz before and now it's like lots of peach fuzz and so like I'm finding myself like shaving my face I'm literally shaving my face and my belly let's not even talk about my belly because that happens too, and a lot of pregnant women won't admit it, but yes, belly hair too, and it's dark, so I feel like freaking Wolverine over here. So I'm like, sh <laughs> extra shaving. Yes, that's embarrassing, and it may be TMI, but you know what? But I have been told I'm glowing, so I'll take that. It may look like and feel like Wolverine, but you won't know because I'm shaving it all off. <laughs> <laughs> but as long as I'm glowing, okay, I'll take it. Yesterday, uh, okay, so 16 weeks says yesterday was pretty moody. To, oh, because this was the day after my birthday. And I turned 27, and on my birthday, I just, I was in a really bad mood all day. You just, mm, mm. it was a bad day. I was much better the next day, but yes okay i'm mentioning like lightheadedness i definitely have to watch out from getting up as a bad uh a bad habit of mine of hopping up really quickly anyway because the kids you know they need something you gotta hop to your feet hop to it when they say jump you so hi hi no no i'm just kidding it's not like that but i mean you still have to get up and go do whatever you know they gotta go potty or you know they need a drink or they need a snack or whatever so you're hopping up, you don't ever have time to like really just sit around, especially if you're like a stay at home mom to multiples <laughs> and you're homeschooling. So, I mean, I'm always hopping up, but I, I'll sit down for just a second and then I'll have to like hop back up and be like, oh, okay, wait, hold up. Let me just breathe real quick and stand right here because I can't see, I'm losing my vision, I'm very lightheaded. So that's something I have to um, deal with as well. Most of the time, I happen, I happen to notice this last time I was pregnant too, is most of the time, okay, I'm either freezing or hot, but like it's getting towards, you know, warmer side of spring and I'm still freezing. I change my clothes like three, four times a day because I don't know how to dress myself <laughs> because I am freezing. One second, I am 
freezing and then I go outside and I'll be super hot so I gotta change and then I'll come back inside my house and I'm freezing. And if we go out at night, I'm wearing sweatpants, I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt, I'm wearing a sweater and sometimes a jacket as well because I'm just super cold. I don't know. <laughs> my internal thermostat is all out of whack right now. Uh, week 17, busy, busy, busy. Yes, finishing moving, finishing cleaning the old place, organizing things in the new house. Just trying to get everything kind of situated because I'm so tired of being in a place that is like I have boxes everywhere and like the house is a disaster. I just, oh, oh, like you, like when you feel like there's so much clutter, it just puts you in a bad mood. And well, at least for me, it does. So I'm trying to clean everything up here lately. The past couple weeks have been crazy like that. And I've been feeling, I don't know, I was kind of feeling a little stressed out too, like the past few weeks as well. Just like I feel like I have too much on my plate like I'm doing way too much but at the same time I don't have the time to just sit around and like just do nothing like I have to get this stuff done now because my energy is gonna go away by the time I reach my third trimester I'm already high risk but my doctor last time couldn't put me on bed rest I had you know two littles now I have three littles like that's not an option for me I can't just I don't have anybody anyway over here it's hard enough for me to make my appointments. Who's gonna watch my kids? I don't have any family clothes. Like, who's gonna watch my kids? My husband's at work. You can't, you know, during COVID, you can't, you can only bring one person to your doctor's appointments and they have to be over 18. I have three littles. So, I mean, that's an issue all in itself. <sighs> Week 18, I am feeling bigger. Yes, my belly has been like, I feel like just been growing super, super fast. And every day I'm like, Showing my husband, I'm like, look, I'm bigger. Like, look, like, look, it's like bigger. Like, it's bigger than it was yesterday. Like, look. <laughs> I'm probably annoying him. I mean, I'm excited about it, but at the same time, you know, like, they just, it amazes me. It, our bodies are so amazing. It just, I just, I'm in awe, but at the same time, I'm still super shocked. Now, at 18 weeks, I have been eating more. Um, I've been getting hungry, should I say. Like, I'm hungry a lot more. But the thing is, I am grazing all day long. But then, like, when it comes to lunch and dinner, I'm eating, and I'm, you know, because I'm hungry. And I want other things besides soups and salads now and crackers. I get full after a few bites, and then I'm still so hungry. And it's so frustrating because I can't even finish... When we go to uh, Chick-fil-A, I can eat like maybe half of my sandwich and I'm like, okay, I can't eat my fries. I'm still super hungry. I can't even finish my sandwich. And so like I have to wait a little bit and then I'll go back to my sandwich and then my sandwich is cold. And I don't know, maybe I'm just complaining, but <laughs> it's just part of it. It's one of the, the things you, you finally get your, your appetite back and you're starting to want to eat and you can't <laughs> so first it's no you don't want to eat and then it's yes you want to eat but you can't I don't know we ended up taking a little getaway trip the other week as well and that was a nice little getaway it was we went to Branson and we've been dying to go back it's been we normally go every single year but it's been a good almost three years since we got to go and then with COVID, we didn't really, we haven't been really able to take an actual vacation vacation in a few years as well. So, I mean, that was, it was just nice to get out of town. Unfortunately, over there, it was so cold and so rainy. And when we go, we don't have the problem of like everything being sold out. Like everything that we had anticipated to do was sold out for days in advance. And we weren't there long enough for it to be unsold out. So... We didn't get to go see the shows that we wanted to go see and do the things that we wanted to do because everything was sold out, but um, we still enjoyed, I at least, still enjoyed being over there. The scenery, just getting out of town is nice. <clears throat> and, and I crocheted this matching set I'm so, so proud of because I can wear this while I'm pregnant. So I've got this cute little, like, um, crocheted shorts, high-waisted shorts, and then I can, as I grow, like, it's not going to be an issue, and then since I was so cold and I wanted a two-piece set, <laughs> so bad, and I didn't want to, like, split up my set, 
um, I just did a crop, a crop um, long sleeve. And I was gonna make this poofy, but then I decided not to. I kind of liked the way it looked like this, and I was like, okay, I'm done. See, it's so cute. But I'm going to do another one that's more like summer related because as I'll be able to wear these shorts, I'm probably not gonna wanna wear the top because it'll be like too hot. So, I mean, I could throw it over. I get cold, I guess, but I want to make one that, like a top, which I mean, normally like I have tops that I've made where it's just like the bralette, cute little tops. But this time I think I'm just gonna make like a, it'll be cropped as well, but it's gonna have straps and stuff and I won't have to worry about like bra straps and Oh, that's too much to worry about anyway, huh? So now at week 19, I noticed at the end of week 18, cramps, leg cramps, like wrist cramps, arm cramps. <laughs> Luckily, I've been doing some prenatal yoga. I've not been doing it regularly, but I mean, at least every few days. I'm not very consistent, like I said, but it helps. It helps. <laughs> A lot and I I almost wonder if this some of those cramps come from just like um, being a little bit dehydrated because I'll forget to like drink as I'm I'm grazing I should be better about drinking more water and that's something I want to be better at I need a better way to remind myself I, I kind of often wonder if it's not just from like the lack of potassium that's in my body or vitamins or whatever but if it's because I'm not drinking enough water so <clears throat> it's just a little what's the word I'm looking for Suspicion. That's not the word I'm looking for, but it'll do. It'll do for now. Suspicion of mine. I'm feeling much more baby kicks, especially on the outside. I mean, I've been feeling baby movement in my belly for like the past month at least. But now you can like really feel it on the outside. I've been trying to get, you know, catch it at the right time so that way the boys can feel. I think that'd be cool, especially for Brixton. The youngest there's also something else um i'm a lot more clumsy i have broken several glasses because i just can't hold on to things and i've like spilled all kinds of things and dropped all kinds of things because i just i don't know i don't know if that has to do with anything related with pregnancy but i feel like maybe it has like it's come from that losing my sense of balance i mean that happened with, with all my pregnancies but the clumsiness yeah but I, I am also losing my balance. <laughs> I look like, uh, well, I feel like, even like when I'm out and about, sometimes I just, I'll lose my balance and I'll kind of stumble and I kind of look drunk or something because like I, I'll just randomly out of nowhere, I'll be standing, I'll be fine and I'll just lose my balance or I'll be standing and I'll try to take a first step and then I'll like stumble and it's kind of scary because you don't want to like fall and like while pregnant especially. I mean, you don't want to fall anyway, but like, you know, falling while pregnant is scary. I, that happened to me once. Actually, on my second pregnancy, I was getting my toddler out of the car and I uh, misstepped when I was walking to the door and I actually like fell. Luckily, I broke his fall and baby, like the baby, second baby was fine and he was fine, but oh my gosh, <laughs> I was scraped and bruised up. But that's just scary, like a scary thought. So now baby is the size of a mango and I'm gonna get better at keeping up with it like I did last time because I wanna better vlog it, the whole thing. I wanna go into like how I'm feeling, especially more with all of this. This is more of a documentary for me, but I would definitely like to share it and if it helps with somebody or you know, you can relate or you know, just whatever. You, you're just looking for, you know, you're pregnant too and you wanna see how other people are doing and if this is normal stuff and you know, it's here and it helps you out awesome but I, I'm tracking it but mainly it's for me but also putting it out there for everybody else so that's what I did a little bit last time this time I want to be better about that I just I felt so bad for so long and I just didn't have any extra energy also I didn't have like I had my thoughts like kind of organized and I've definitely been keeping up with my belly book but I've also had to catch up but I've had it written down. I just hadn't put it in there yet and then I didn't have everything in one spot so that way I could go over everything and um, more de in, de in detail, should I say. But anyways, I'll give you a belly shot like I did in my last pregnancy. I mean, I already kind of gave you one right then, but I'll give you another one just to keep up with it. Like I said, here we are. 
19 weeks and wait, it was on Monday. Today is uh, Wednesday, so three or 19 weeks and three days, right? Because today's Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, yeah. Okay, so 19 weeks and three days. Here we are, little baby. We don't know what it is yet. Pull the thing down so you can see. I'm fixing to, um, my belly button is fixing to pop out. That's a lot happening a lot sooner than it did last time. Uh, I don't know, it's probably around this, this time anyway, around 20 weeks. But that just started happening. I noticed that yesterday. Here we are. 19 weeks and three days. Little belly. And actually, we are um, at my appointment tomorrow. You know, I'll probably find out what the gender is, but I'm planning on doing a gender reveal. And I'm trying to decide if I'm just gonna like have them write it on a piece of paper and not find out, like at the, the thing. And then find out like I had a gender reveal, but it, I don't know. It's a lot of planning. I just wanted it to be something fun. I go back and forth for the, like wanting to find out anyway or not. Like I don't know if I really want to. Pretty wishy washy. I I mean, I would like to wait until birth. That would be awesome. But at the same time, I only have boy stuff, and if it is a girl, I would like to have at least a little bit of girl stuff. I mean, from the last pregnancy, I did buy a couple girl things because I wasn't convinced that he was going to be a girl but that was only like three outfits somehow like I don't know why I haven't given them away I've talked about it but it just never happened I guess I just forgot about it or something um so I really only had like three three girl outfits and I would like to have a little bit more <laughs> if it is a girl but like I said I'm I'm still trying to decide. I mean, this is even last second. Like, should I find out tomorrow? Like, just at the, the ultrasound. I mean, that's what my husband wants to do. He's like, he's pretty convinced that it is a boy. And he's like, you know it's gonna be a boy anyway. So, I mean, cause I've been stressing out about this. And he's like, I don't see why you're stressing out. It's gonna be a boy anyway. And I'm like, but what if it's a girl? You know, I would like to be at least surprised. And it's kind of hard to read. It's kind of hard to just fake a reaction once you already know you know it's still exciting but at the same time you don't get that first initial reaction and that's what I want to want to get so <sighs> I got a lot to think about today that and I'm gonna handle all of it because if I do I can't just give it to my husband I don't trust him enough to like I mean like don't get me wrong I would trust my husband but I mean he's not gonna be as excited as I am in like doing the gender reveal so I'm gonna have to put that together and I'd have to find somebody to order whatever, if it's a boy or a girl, and then I'll just find out at one time. Because while I think my husband could keep the secret, if it's a boy or a girl, he's just so busy all the time. And I can't, you know, like, I don't want to put it in his hands to, like, have to go take extra steps to go find girl or boy gender reveal stuff and then put it all together, so... I don't know. I'm not very prepared right now. So. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much for watching. And if you got to this far, I'm really impressed because there's been a lot of rambling and trying to throw stuff together in here and mom brain. I just, I'm so scattered. So scattered. But like I said, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me if you're not already following me on my social medias and subscribe to my channel so you can keep up with the baby because I'm gonna be doing the weekly bump dates again, or bump updates, whatever it's called. <laughs> and don't forget to like this video if you liked it. it. Helps me out, know what you like, what you don't like. And you know, this is more of this, I mean, it's not really, I guess it's a little bit educational, but not really. I haven't shared anything that's like super educational in this video, <laughs> so I don't know. Anyways, if you're pregnant, comment up down below. How far along are you? Do you know if it's a boy or a girl? Are you even wanting to know? 
Um, how are you going to find out? Um, you know, that's something that I'm just curious about. By the way, my due date is September 13th. I forgot to mention that. That is actually two days before my oldest son's birthday. So I'm trying to figure out birthday stuff for that as well. So, um, anyways, you guys, I love you so much. I hope you have a wonderful Hey guys, from the future, um, I just wanted to say I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I don't know what happened to this footage, but <laughs> thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.